Durban. Yeah, the black one out. In October 2018, I went to Parliament Square um, where there was something called the Declaration of Rebellion happening and I just went along to find out about it. And while I was there, a small Swedish girl aged, I think she was 15 then, got up to speak. And everything she was saying was true, very, very sort of simple and factual. And I thought, wow, like this was true when I was 15 and it's still true now. And we haven't changed anything. And what have we done? And what have I been doing? Um, and I realized then that I had to do something. That I had to step into doing right. something. Yeah, 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 cool. But I mean, I, I got into XR because, like, uh, like so many people, I'm like terrified about about um, that we're driving just about all kinds of life on Earth extinct, and, and you know, possibly us with it, or but definitely we're we're driving so much of what's beautiful, like into destruction and you know I can't sit by and watch that happen the rest of my life not when I've got free time and and um, the, the privilege to be able to take crazy actions like I just feel it's my duty it's incredible to me because it's, it's about taking real action to really disrupt status quo and that that seemed to suit me because I'm a structural engineer and very quickly, I got into working out what structures we could use. I was kind of sick of doing the least I could or signing this petition or changing my personal lifestyle. I thought things just aren't changing quick enough. And I thought, why not? And what can I do about it? And if I'm not going to do it, who is? And if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? So then that was my first step. I, I, I thought I would get involved. and. I first got into animal rights because I, 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 I knew I was, always cared about people but then I found out, uh, it seems really obvious now, that there's billions of animals in the world that are suffering and it came like a flood that all this suffering, all this pain in the world was just happening all the time and I had to do something, I couldn't let it go on. I became an activist mainly for animal rights, um, so yeah I just hate seeing any kind of injustice and to me animals are the most innocent beings on the planet they don't deserve um yeah the way that we treat them um so yeah to me animal rights is always the leading cause for my activism being part of animal rebellion i realized that climate change um is also a huge problem animal agriculture is the leading cause for climate change and yeah it's just a really important um cause for so many reasons animal suffering um, future of the planet, um, human health. The whole way that we eat and that we feed ourselves needs to change. So intensive farming, um, the uh, concentration that we have on eating animal products over eating plant-based food, um, and all of these things are like really highlighted and emphasised by fast food companies who are promoting kind of eating meat with every meal and food that's produced very cheaply and fast. Intensive farming that happens all across the world is really, really damaging the environment, mm -hmm. hastening on the climate crisis, it's all wrapped up with that and also with both human and non-human inhabitants being driven off their land. Um, so there's a whole lot of issues that are all bound up um, in the way that the fast food industry works that is just not actually good for any of us at the end of the day. We're hoping to send a message that this has to end, that animal agriculture has to stop and that has to be replaced by a new way of living in this case, a plant-based way of living. And we want to transition to a just and sustainable plant-based food system because we think that is a system that's going to be fair to people, fair to the planet, and fair to animals. Uh, 
and we're hoping that this will really wake people up that we know how bad it is for the environment and that we need to change our ways and we need to change it in a systemic way. So it's more than just about personal diet choice, that systemically these companies have to start transitioning to plant-based agriculture and governments have to start supporting them in that transition as well. I know I've tried personally for years and years doing outreach, talking to people one by one on the street, and it's slow, and we need, we need more than that. That alone isn't enough. The situation is urgent enough, and the problem is big enough in the world that we need non-violent civil disobedience to actually bring about the change we need. But that first cake was even leaving in place. We tried year and year again doing things that aren't disruptive and we need to get ignored. But with this action, no one can ignore it. And that is the kind of change we need everyone to start taking. I'm involved in this action specifically because I really followed and really admired the, the work that the anti-McDonald's campaign were doing in the 90s and followed the whole McLeibel case. There's a tendency on the part of the... Who is the guy in the Third Reich who was the propaganda minister? And despite all of that, things still haven't changed and improved that much, really. Um, and we're just <laughs> in a massive crisis right now and things need to change quickly and drastically. They are a symbol of the meat industry, they're a symbol of animal agriculture, and they are a symbol for what we're doing to our planet. Um, they are causing millions of acres of deforestation in the Amazon, they are paying people low wages and in really terrible working environments, they are killing literally millions, or if not billions of animals worldwide. They're a symbol of the system that we're in and a symbol of how we treat the planet and other beings. So McDonald's was the most, the, mo the easiest symbol of that, but McDonald's is not just a problem. Every company that takes part in environmental animal exploitation is the problem. If we can really highlight the fragility of the supply chains that we have at the moment, then we can help to make people more aware of the overall fragility of our food system at the moment. I hope that it will accelerate the transition, at least in the UK, away from industrial animal farming and meat eating to more to plant based diet because like if we if we all carry on with a meat based diet, um, you know, we'll we will eradicate most kinds of life on earth. There's not enough space for all of our cows and pigs and chickens and 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 our ecosystems. Like we've got to choose we can't oh, we don't get to choose one or the other. We have you know, we won't survive without the ecosystems, so we definitely we can't grow the billions of cows and chickens and, and slaughter them all the time. Like it's just, it's just an existential threat to, to everything that's beautiful in the world. So we've got to uh, accelerate that transition. It's happening anyway, but we've got to speed it up. It's going to, yeah, it's going to annoy a lot of people. I mean, it's going to enrage a lot of people, um, but it's still going to make them think about it, even if they're angry. I'm really proud that we're going to take on one of the companies that's causing the most destruction globally to the environment, uh, to animals and to people. So I think it's about time that someone stands up and does something about it. And I just can't wait until the day that we do it. I think that we've got a really awesome team and I've seen time and time again how um, when a committed group of people really pull together then um, incredible things are possible. I think no matter what happens, I mean obviously if we are able to have the impact that we're aiming for then that will be awesome. I think the most important thing 
means that people are being inspired to feel empowered to have the impact to do something that could have an impact and that is um, the saying no to a status quo that overall isn't looking after us. nervous. I mean, it's a lot for everyone to learn. Like, there's a lot of new people learning to make these complicated structures. It's, it's a sophisticated operation and, we, and we're doing it all in a self-organizing system where everyone's engaging just by their own consent. And it's, it's always complicated organizing quite large groups of people. In a way, we do have to become a, a kind of military drill unit for a day to make it all come together in like 15 minutes. I'm pretty nervous and I'm pretty scared. I'm pretty stressed. We've been working on this for a little bit. I feel a bit nervous that we're kind of taking on such a, like one of the biggest companies in the world and really powerful and we don't know what the consequences might be. I'm pretty nervous about what the outcome is. McDonald's are causing rainforest deforestation, causing mass slaughter of animals. Animals are suffering just so that people can eat a burger. We know that animal agriculture is one of the leading causes of climate change. We're asking McDonald's to transition to a plant-based menu and we want to put pressure on them and their CEO to actually make a decision and do the right thing. McDonald's has kind of hastened the progress towards the food systems we see today. Um, food systems such as industrial land and agriculture, factory farming. Three, two, one, lift! Um, this kind of ongoing race to the bottom where the most animals crammed in cages, the most deforestation, some these companies racing to destroy the world's quickest and almost seems like McDonald's is a symbol of that. McDonald's sources feed for cows from illegally deforested areas in the Amazon. McDonald's profits from and relies upon factory farming um, and intensive farming. We treat other species as lesser than us for no other reason than our convenience. Like, it's not even that we shouldn't or it's wrong. It's just, in my head, it's just, we just can't do that. It's, it's not a way that we can live in a world that we claim to be just and fair and based on freedom and equality. Yep. Knowing that this was happening in three other places around the country. And I think when, I know when we got, we got set up at the site I was on, and getting the pictures through on the phone of Manchester, Coventry, Basingstoke. It was such a moment of inspiration. And um, there, was this, there was this point when everyone on our site, kind of we announced that we had shut down all four and there was just, everyone was cheering. And it was just, yeah, this real point of just, wow, we've done this. Like, this felt impossible. I think there were so many times when we thought, this is impossible. And then we pulled it off. My check! My check! All four! All four! McDonald's distribution centers! McDonald's distribution centers! Are shut down! Across the country! Woo! We fucking did it, everyone! And it wasn't because.
years we were, you know, a team of hundreds with all this specialised equipment and knowledge and money. It was because we knew that we needed to. We knew that there was no one else coming in to save us. There was no one who was going to, you know, fly in and do the magic bullet solution and the world was going to get better. I think everyone just knew 100% that it's on us and we need to do this as no one else will. Before McDonald's, fast food wasn't really a thing. McDonald's was a pioneer of this new system which, you know, put speed and mass production above things like care and care for the environment, care for animals, care for workers. McDonald's really led, led the way in this most horrible of fashions. We wanted to put a spotlight on them and say that you can make change, you have made change, you've changed our food systems, and now it's time to do it again. And now it's time to do it with the right things in mind. Rather than profit, it's time to do it with the planet, with animals, with all life in mind and it's time to kind of make a stand and be the leader and be the pioneer um, in this way rather than always being the pioneer of destruction. I don't think anyone wants the climate crisis. I don't think anyone wants to see their friends and loved ones die or be in horrible situations of you know extreme heat, food shortages, um, I don't think anyone wants to see the planet die. Our food systems are such an important part of everyone's life. There's not something that anyone can remove themselves from. Um, if we run out of food, everyone is screwed. Like, there's no way around that. If our food systems fail, everyone is fucked. There is just no, I don't think anyone can think that this doesn't affect them. And I think that really showed in the conversations we had that people understood how urgent this is and how important these conversations are. Blockades have been set up outside four McDonald's distribution centers. The activist group Animal Rebellion say they're hoping to stop deliveries to some 1,300 restaurants from sites at Hemel Hempstead, Basingstoke, Coventry. We've shut the whole place down, and not only that, we've shut down distribution centres across the country. So four distribution centres. Sarah, but the thing is that we, as human beings, are meat eaters. We always have been, and that's why we. Ah, uh, McDonald's is one of the biggest symbols of the animal agriculture industry, which, as we know, destroying the planet killing animals, it's exploiting workers. They're calling for the fast food outlet to become fully plant-based by 2025. McDonald's say they're assessing the impact on deliveries and have apologised to customers for any disruption. I think what we're doing has to make a difference because we don't have any other choice. And I think, regardless, regardless of whether what we're doing made an impact, and you know, there's people who are going to argue either way, there's people who are going to say that this was the most impactful action because of X, Y, Z, there's people who are going to say, well, what are you actually doing? Go get a job. You know, there's always people who are going to believe different things. But I think regardless, we're going to keep trying and I think that will always make a difference people trying to change the world for the better will always make a difference in the long run or at least that's what I believe <laughs>